Meet Taylor. Taylor loves using math to describe the world. Today, Taylor is interested in the quantity g, which depends on the quantity f, and f depends on another quantity x. The relationship between g and f is nice and simple, which makes Taylor happy. But what about the relationship between g and x? Maybe x is easier to measure, or from Taylor's perspective, maybe it's just fun to find our relationships. Well, in this case, it turns out to be hard to find a simple link between g and x using their mutual relationship to f, or Taylor. But what can Taylor do about it? Maybe Taylor can pretend f and x are linked together in a simpler way. Hopefully this will still yield the relationship between g and x that agrees pretty well with Taylor's observations. So Taylor gives it a shot. The easiest place to start is to assume f doesn't change at all. Taylor notices that most values of x encountered in everyday life are right around the specific value a. So Taylor takes the value of f when x equals a and pretends it never changes. This is called a zeroth order approximation, since Taylor assumes f depends on x to the zero, or in other words, that f is a constant. But that doesn't work so well in this case, so Taylor has to try something a little more sophisticated. Maybe pretending that f of x is a line? The first thing to do when defining a line is to find a slope to use. If the equation for slope is rearranged, Taylor finds an equation for a line. Because the slope is the same at any point on a line, Taylor can evaluate this derivative at a instead of at any arbitrary x without changing anything. This is called a first order approximation since f depends on the first power of x. This is a bit better, but Taylor still isn't satisfied. The next thing to try is to pretend that f depends on x squared. This means that f of x is a parabola, which is the same as saying the first derivative of f f prime is a line. So Taylor can use the same process as before to get an equation for a line that describes f prime. And now to get f, Taylor just needs to integrate f prime. To find the constant of integration, Taylor uses the fact that plugging in x equals a into f of x must give the value f of a. The result is a second order approximation, because f depends on x squared. This approximation is the best yet, but since Taylor loves math and wants to keep having fun, let's see what happens if f depends on x cubed. Well, just like before, Taylor starts out by writing an equation for a line, but this time the equation is for the second derivative. So to get back to f, Taylor needs to integrate twice. Now we have a third order approximation, but now Taylor definitely sees a pattern. In fact, Taylor can approximate a function as accurately as anyone could want just by adding up terms that follow this pattern. And if Taylor has enough time to add up an infinite number of terms, the approximation becomes exact. And just like that, Taylor is a famous mathematician. 